All right, we are ready for women's semifinal action. Crystal Galvin in the black and gold will be taking on Erica Jones. I'm Ted Rutan and Derek Davis. This should be an excellent matchup. Absolutely. Uh, Erica's, uh, you know, multi-time uh, uh, national and world champion. Um, she's, uh, she's, she's one of the best in the world, period. There's no question. Crystal's also a very strong shooter. Should give Erica a nice challenge. So, a little bit of wind, as you've mentioned before, not as much of a factor here in the compound, especially since it's pretty much, right now, looks mostly tailwind. Yeah, yeah, so that shouldn't affect them too much. Uh, you know, even the top women are probably shooting upwards close to the 60 pound limit. So we're about to get underway here. Glad you're joining us. Want to thank USA Archery. Teresa has just been fantastic getting us all the information we need. One thing you might have noticed is on the recurve side, especially as we've gotten down the, you know, the, the, the brackets, the archers tend to have a coach in the box, whereas you haven't seen that on the compound side. And, and, why, and why would that? And, and I knew you were going to ask me that, and I was just going to say, I'm just pointing it out. I can't really tell you well, why there's that difference. Well, it looks like we have a coach there with... Yeah, that's another judge behind Erica. Yeah. Well, that is a judge. Okay, yeah. yep, yep. Yeah. Could, the shirts are so close, couldn't tell. My professional and personal opinion is that when you're talking about the top shooters, the recurve is such a, a nuanced type of bow. You know, um, requires skill, but a little finesse as well. Sometimes that archer likes having that coach there to keep an eye on them. When you get to the top level of compound shooters, they're either on their game or they're not. You know, it's, uh, it's an easier bow to shoot. So. So we're set to begin this semi-final action. There's Erica Jones in the red. Crystal Galvin. And they both open up with tents. As you might expect. Still have the scores from our last quarterfinal that was won by Jesse Broadwater over Mark Gruber 147-145 says 115 on the board but that's because he simply didn't bother turning over his 145 was going to be enough to catch Jesse and Crystal looks like she's got two tens and a nine. And I think Erica has matched her. So we'll wait for the final the official score. It looks like they've opened up with a tie, 29 each. So these 50 meter targets, 80 centimeters target face, not proving too difficult right now in this wind. No, not at all. Not for this level of shooters. Uh, well, right. I, I mean, when I say not proving too difficult, not for these shooters. Because right. they are so accomplished. Yeah. Um, so this is where, where the difference is between the recurving compound, where it's about ultimate accuracy. They're looking to see who drops, you know, the, uh, you know, from the most from a perfect score. Uh, not, not so much the other way as who has the higher score. Obviously, it's higher, but... Who's going to blink first? And they will come down and check for the first 
time. So after the first end, we will see if, in fact, there is a tie. Clouds getting out of here, and it is going to warm up considerably this afternoon, I believe. Yeah, I can feel the temperature going up here in our tent. Might be picking up a little heat from that uh, and humidity from that storm we had about an hour ago. Sweet. Get a good look there as they pull out their arrows. Now they'll go back to make it just as you called it, 29-29. Good eye there, Derek Davis. And probably those watching can hear the wind picking up. And once again, it's taking another turn as it's now coming more out of the east. Yeah, the wind sucks trying to turn toward us a little bit. Or excuse me, out of the west, I apologize, toward the east. And folks, we are we had a rain delay earlier, weather delay. So if you're just joining us, <clears throat> we're in a semi-final of the U.S. Open Archery Championship. We'll end up having a short break between that and the Easton Joad Nationals. as they will get underway fairly quickly after the conclusion of the U.S. Open. So now they get the signal to come back and here we will begin our second end. There's your look at Erica Jones. Here's Crystal Galvin. They appear to have both started off with tens again. Crystal almost right on top of her first arrow in this end. <coughs> this will be her final in this second end. Crystal's got a that looks like 
three on top of each other. Yeah, very tight group. Looks like one fat arrow. Hard to tell. Some look like they're in the tent. Some might just be out. They're right on. They're all sitting right on the line. And here's Erica Jones' final. Erica's two arrows appear to both be in the ten, but a little more spread out. The last one looking like a nine. So again, we will wait for the official scoring. Erica is uh, out of Nebraska, currently living in Ohio, and Crystal, originally from Ohio, currently living in Connecticut. I have the pleasure of watching Crystal shoot quite a bit up in the New England area where I live. One of the things I like to take notice of at a competition like this is the individual attire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of those are, are professional archers and uh, you can see on the shirts they're wearing the, the uh, official team shirts of the manufacturer of their bow. But they can, but they've got different shoes. The shoes aren't the shoes <laughs> the sh aren't matching, and some <laughs> sometimes uh, fashion can be part of an individual Absolutely. sport like this. Absolutely. You know, archers like to make a statement. Of course, over there in the recurve, uh, I believe it's Klimacek that is wearing the yes, the American, American flag, flag shorts. shorts. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of become his uh, signature. And looks like we are tied at 58 now. Back-to-back -back 29s for Crystal Galvin, Galvin and Erica Jones. As predicted so far, a very tight match. Maybe we'll get to see a shoot-off somewhere here today. Haven't had one. Haven't had one yet. Here on this broadcast, on these broadcast lanes. our national head coach uh, Kesek Lee standing under the tent over there white shirt watching the action and has he worked with Erica for some time uh, no the he's he's uh, more of a recurve Olympic style coach okay and uh, Erica you know pretty much self-coached now but uh, seeing her throughout the years uh, it was her dad who was typically behind her you know helping her and teaching her and guiding her so it looks like we're just waiting for some of the Masters. They are in medal rounds down at the far end of this field. So tied at 58 after two ends. Semi-final, Crystal Galvin and Erica Jones. Two of our best, and uh, they're proving it. And the wind picking up a little more. Now, what were some of the tougher conditions you ever faced um, 
as far as wind goes? We've seen some wind, uh, pretty strong winds. Uh, it, you know, I coach primarily collegiate archery, and uh, we've uh, we've had some situations where targets have been blown over and arrows destroyed, and people having to aim as much as a full target off. Doesn't look like it affected him one bit on no. those opening. It's those are almost spider killers they got down there, both Erica and Crystal. And experienced archers that are listening know what I mean by that, but just to fill you in, there's a little tiny cross in the middle of the target and we call it the spider. Wow. And again, they, they're going toe to toe. It's almost as if they're mimicking each other in the target. Two real solid tens down there. Crystal. It's a high nine on her last shot. Let's see what Erica does if she can pull away by one point here. We're still tied, it looks like. The first two from each of them that time looked like we could have just left it there and uh, been a sundial and told time. It was <laughs> yeah. right in the middle of the target. Some great shooting we're watching here. So it's possible we could have our third straight pair of 29s in the end. Which, if in fact that holds up, would be 87-87. Got a nice little crowd of spectators there behind the archers and enjoying this uh, tightly contested match. Derek, it sure looks like they each have 29, but again, that's too far away for me to see <laughs> and be yeah. accurate. And I don't want to make any bad calls, even with the binoculars, so we'll, we'll wait for the official score. Seven on hers, and so did Crystal. Uh, fairly consistent, do you think? <laughs> 29, 29, 29. Just a bit. <laughs> 29, 29, 29. This is this is what we paid for. So we have two more three arrow ends remaining, but this one has been as close as it can get. Twenty nine, twenty nine, twenty nine, twenty nine, and twenty nine. 29. It may just take a 30 to win this one. It may just. Or a pair of them. Or a shoot off. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. <laughs>
So again, the wind changing. Coming right now a little more west to east again. See what it currently says west southwest at seven. Feels like a little stronger gust than seven miles an hour right now. Okay, we're set for our fourth of five three arrow ends. My amateur wind meter here on my iPhone, I just measured 12 miles per hour, so. Okay. Well, there might be your, uh, your tipping point. Looks like Crystal's got an 8-9 liner down there. Erica shot a 10. Crystal second arrows, clean ten. Erica what appears to be a nine. Well, depending on Crystal's first arrow, still could be tied. So there we just saw Erica taking another look at it. last hour was too close for me to call nine or ten so perhaps Erica may have our tipping point here. has just taken the advantage right. and if in fact she did was it just by one I mean it's possible here that she might have got a couple and as we've seen this match is so tight two points could be huge gust of wind, it seems like it may have affected Crystal a little more than Erica. Well, it looked like her first one was a yes. little low, so then when she adjusted, the second one might have been a little too high. Yes. Again, Crystal Galvin in the black and gold, target one. Erica Jones in the red, target two. And now we will get a chance to finally see the scores. Crystal puts up a 114. So a 27 there for Crystal. And indeed, it's a two-point lead now. A 116, so another 29 for Erica. You see Erica checking uh, the back end of her arrows as she's walking back. They, uh, you know, when the arrows are hitting so close you can damage the knock end of the arrow and you want to check that and make sure 
How many arrows typically would you carry? The top shooters carry quite a few, uh, you know, usually more than a dozen. They're sold in a dozen, but uh, you know, you, you know, it looks like Erica's got uh, probably two dozen in her quiver. Um, you know, you want to have extras in case they break, uh, in case they get, you know, damage from a pass-through or anything like that. And uh, it's uh, just important to be ready. Yeah, then these matches, there's no equipment failure timeout allowed. Uh, there's no. So no actual rule as far as no how many you can carry. No, the the only thing they do check and when you first show up for the tournament is that all the arrows have to match. Uh, your initials need to be on the arrows in case. Uh, you know, they need to identify it for like a world record or something. If you set a record, you want to make sure you get credit for that. And they want to make absolutely sure it's your arrow. Because um, you may end up on a target with someone that has the same color combination. Yeah, if you notice that, and that's very personal, you'll notice everyone has different color veins and knocks on their arrows. And probably a would be a huge coincidence to have the same initials and same color pattern. And then but not impossible. But then <laughs> would you like have put some type of number on them? Some uh, a lot I mean, of something to mark your to distinctly mark your arrows. Your, your initials and your color combination are key. Uh, you know, now some archers will come with sets of different color arrows. They get them both checked. You're only allowed to come to the, the shooting area with one type of you know color combination uh, you know but if they were to approach the line and notice that their competitor especially not so much a compound they have their own target face but a recurve they're sharing the target face the competitor has the same color combination they may run back and switch out to the other colors so they can identify their arrows all right our fifth and final three arrow end 116 114 Erica Jones with the the advantage Crystal's first arrow is an 8 9 liner and Erica shoots another 10 so currently big Erica advantage has another a 3 point advantage potential 3 point advantage Crystal looks like she's eked in another 10. And so is Erica. So the final arrow, possible three point difference. Crystal looks like a nine. Erica looks like a nine, so comfortably consistent 29s for Erica through the match. So if she did in fact get a 29 in that end, that'd be five in a row for a total of 145. And actually, this what the same for Crystal, except for the last end. Well, Crystal had 27 on the fourth end, right? And that made the difference. So we won't get her shoot so off. <laughs> No, but it was extremely close yes. all the way. Yes. And perhaps just one, one tiny mistake in you know engaging the wind. That's that's what that's what compound is now designed to be about is who's going to make that first mistake, yeah, or that last mistake. So they will now go up and mark their scores and. Certainly appears from here that Erica Jones will move on to the compound women's final. Well, Brady, you'll move on to the, the gold medal match, and uh, regardless, you're going home with the uh, medal. And I know gold is obviously everybody's uh, ultimate peak out here, and you're heading there. So, congratulations, good luck in the next match. Thank you, really appreciate it, guys. So, they will.
walk down with Mike Columber. Mike will take a quick look and And he certainly does declare Erica Jones the victor in this semifinal match. We're going to take a short break here. We're going to come back and see if we can get a chance to talk to Erica Jones. As she will move on to the gold medal match, Crystal Galvin will still have a shot at the bronze. We'll be right back with the 2014 U.S. Open Archery Championships. Okay. Welcome back to Hamilton, Ohio. We are joined by Erica Jones. Erica, congratulations on that semifinal win. Thank you. I felt like I shot some good shots, so that's what I was going for. Consistency. I mean, after three, it was 29-29, uh, all three ends for both of you. Yeah, it was uh, It was really close, even, even down to the wire. Every arrow counted for sure. Uh, did the wind change a little bit during that match? Yeah, it was quartering um, to the right for, I don't know, <laughs> every other arrow or so. And then it was coming from behind, and you really had to watch it. It was pretty tricky. It looked like Crystal one time hesitated, and that might have been the, the actual difference in the match. Yep, like I said, every arrow counts. Well, congratulations again, and good luck in the gold medal. Thank you very much. All right, Erica Jones, as she moves on to the gold medal match.